hello again and uh, thanks for watching uh, especially like to say thanks to new subscribers especially the two Neils um, very very pleased to see uh, see your names there um, and look forward to sharing information with you in due course um, I was going to leave a week before doing the next video but I thought I'd strike whilst the iron's hot there's some um, extra information that I thought uh, would be, be valuable for, for anyone uh, searching out there that I've um, been been able to uh, to look at at site one um, so the purpose of this video today is to uh, to show you some of the sapling breaks now um, we get these all over the wood and they appear along sort of deer pathways um, they appear in isolation at random places and they're void completely void in other locations and one of the areas that I looked at was near the public car park and you know none of these were about so you know we're, we're, we're trying to establish if it's deer or human activity behind these uh, and in order to discount them and if it was in uh, human behaviour I would have expected to see more of these near to the the public area public parking area but there's not absolutely none of them and yet you see lots and lots of deer activity deer footprints deer scrapings the likes so um, in site one itself you get loads of these they appear in clumps up to 10 at a time at varying heights some down at uh, two and a half feet others I've seen at six foot the majority though between three three and a half foot and five foot uh, okay that I've tried to work out if any of this is deer related activity and as much as I look I can't find anything that would actually validate this as being deer activity the the fact of the matter is that only about one percent of these actually show any scrapings that's antler scrapings at the base they're straightforward snaps okay clean snaps there's no no sign of any where um, antler wise at the actual breaking point okay but you do this is what I, I'm trying to establish now is that you do find other markings either above or below the break itself now some of these markings are very very odd uh, here I'll have a closer look, give you a closer look all right they're sort of elliptical um, pointed at the at the sides these have actually healed over time because you can see the uh, the tree itself has actually started to um, regrow over the growth uh, over the over the cut itself but look at the shape all right and it goes straight down to the core of the sapling they're all like this they go down to the core on this one you got four in a row on that side S flick it over and you got four in a row on that side okay um, this was a really good one so this is why I've um, decided to cut this one out and bring it back with me and for the reasons I'm going to explain now four in a row could that be four finger marks all right why do I say finger marks well I've done some experiments at home and or down by the nearest near park that I, uh, I go to I've been experimenting over the last four or five months at making nail marks on live branches snapped branches um, dead branches and 
very interesting. This is very interesting. I, uh, I'm going to show you here. This is one that I um, that was done last uh, last autumn. Well, yeah, round right about last autumn, the end of last summer. Um, in order to do some nail marks on it, and if you look here, see the shape. Okay, very very similar shape. There, there's a, there's a better one. Can you see there? Elongated at the ends, and it goes down. And this is what happens: it goes down when you sink your nail in. It goes down to the core of the wood, and it makes that sort of sign. And and the you can see here it's been healing. Now the difference between this is look, that's one of my nails, and that is comparable to something a lot bigger in that case. So I. I've done loads of these and they all, you know, you do get a lot of variety in with the, um, the types of uh, markings you make. I mean, just in this alone, you've got two, two different styles there. So they're all going to be varied, but these ones are particularly interesting because that looks so closely similar to the ones that I've um, got here. Now, if it was deer doing this, uh, you'd see a lot of scrapings around by the brake itself. And uh, I've got a deer antler here, so we're going to do do something of a, a a mark of how a deer would do it. See, you probably get a slight. Um, rubbing on one of the sides of the the brake and clearly we don't get that with these now the significance these happen there is a definitely there is a concentration of these in site one there is definitely a concentration of tree arches in site one but you do find these throughout the wood where I've been looking. Uh, that's where there's um, new, relatively new, new growth where you've got saplings. Where there's no saplings, you're not going to find any of these. But you do find other features, of course. But where you got the saplings, and in dense woodland, far away from the paths, I'm finding these. So, and they've got markings as well, like this. So, is it human activity? Right, points for against human activity. I've seen these in the last part of the summer. So it's only happened within a day or so. I found a fresh, fresh break. the trail cameras were set up at that point and it didn't spot anything unfortunately because it was a, a different part in site one where this tree snap was um, the chance of a human coming through there because of all the brambles and growth is pretty 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 slight you know I have to say one in a million of somebody coming through there and um, you do get foragers looking for, for forest food yeah, they, they, they do they do happen but would they be breaking these or will they have a bit more respect for the wood where they are uh, I would believe that they have a bit more respect for the wood and they wouldn't go around breaking these trees. So they're there, they're there in clumps and 
at the at the same time that I had that um, activity with the trees pushed over and finding the alleged or potential tree knocking stick there was a fresh sapling break there then so this was happening in the winter as well when hardly anyone will be in the wood walking in the wood anyway let alone going off path and venturing into the uh, undergrowth itself so they're happening at different times of the year and I think I've been able to discount the fact that this is deer behavior because I've not seen any videos anywhere where this sort of damage has been apparent yeah you do get them scraping the antlers on the trees uh, in a marked way they do damage these and I've actually seen one that has actually been damaged but it's had a, a, had a snap to it but you also see the lots of scrapings from the antlers doing that damage now some of these being you know five and six foot tall so how in the hell unless the deer is actually pushing the, the sapling over and then breaking it with his horns then it's unlikely and considering the, the volume of damage or saplings that have um, been damaged inside one you know I must be talking about over a hundred well way over a hundred probably over two hundred and they're the ones that I can probably easily find and there's probably loads more scattered around that part as well so so many of them would a human be going around doing that I just don't don't buy it and it's just not the sort of behavior that you would accept, expect with a human walking through a patch of forest and the fact that they're happening in other isolated parts of the wood where I guarantee nobody goes to because they're so inaccessible um, and yet you're finding them there so we've got the deer activity which I think we're going to discount because I you know the Forestry Commission have um, I've, I've read one of their books that talking about deer damage they talk about the, the, the scrapings to the the trees where they're taking the bark off where they're trying to remove their ant um, the velvet from the, their antlers every every season uh, but no mention of this absolutely no mention of this and if that experiment has anything to do with it then you know you're looking at other types of damage associated with the the snap itself um, the thing that gets me is this so if we're discounting deer then we've got to try and discount humans because they're the only, the only other possible um, creature <laughs> to actually do this sort of damage uh, that, that we're trying to discount hundreds of these hundreds of these uh, sapling breaks all right so many of them and and, and yet you get lots and lots of um, branch breakages at higher higher levels as well but with regards to the saplings in association with the snap itself you get the markings okay now for me when I first saw them I thought nail markings so I did some experiments and it's been over four months I've actually looked at this to see if it can if I can get the same sort of feature as these ones and I've got exactly the same feature but my my nails are pretty big and they leave markings like that compare that with those now you're telling me that 
humans are actually going around marking all of these saplings at the same time as they're um, breaking them. So, no, that is not the case. You know, I don't buy it that these that humans are actually going in and, and breaking these in clumps and, and the likes. Let alone going on then to actually mark them with their nails. I cannot identify why these markings are here otherwise. If it was deer, um, they would have to they would have to mark it in in a certain way to get that sort of um, damage in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out um, and yet the common deer sort of damage is so they rub rub up against like that and it's not going to cause that sort of damage then so it's not deer I think I can firmly establish it's not deer doing this so therefore it, it cannot be deer doing these you know uh, of, am I dealing with the only complicated type of deer in the whole of the country or the whole of the world for doing these sorts of um, clumps of sapling breaks no I don't think so so I've discounted deer and I'm also discounting human activity so what are we up against here then I guess the culprit is potentially the same one as the one that left the tree knocking stick so yeah I believe we're looking at further physical evidence of Bigfoot activity in the United Kingdom uh, in America they do sapling breaks tree breaks but I think in the UK they're probably being a bit more discreet about them themselves uh, if they were in the forestry area and pushing down all the all the trees I, I think they would be alerting um, themselves to to people they'll be wanting to know why are these um, mature trees falling down all of a sudden but regarding these you could quite easily blame it on deer activity or the likes but why were they doing it well I, I honestly think that site one is uh, a special significant place for them they don't go there very often I'd say probably once a month that they pass by um, but because of the the nature of all the tree arches and the concentration of these sapling breaks and where it is it's on the north side of the wood so um, it could be a territorial marker for any any other group moving into the area coming through that part of the wood um, so maybe maybe but certainly they're there for a reason something has been making these for a reason and the only culprits I can come up with is what we're trying to to search for and that is a real living and breathing British Bigfoot uh, okay so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at this for this video and um, so if you're out in the woods and you're and you're coming across this sort of feature then you may be hitting upon something that uh, is is related to another population of these creatures
in, in your part. So keep your eyes open for this sort of behaviour. Uh, likewise, like Niels said, um, tree branches have been stuck in the ground because um, I found some of those. Tree arches, of course. Um, I found probably getting on for 40 to 50 tree arches now. Uh, some of them are, are relatively small and could potentially be blamed on natural situations. But the big ones? No way. No way. And some of them have uh, shown the, the curvature of the arch, but for some reason or other it's, the tree is bent back up. But you go and look down at the ground, you can see a trail of sticks where the tips of the, the tree was being held down. So that's another feature. The little TP structures I found a few of those. There's little piles of sticks uh, that have been lent on each other, sometimes against a tree, and you know you've got to be off path in order to say there's any chance of it not being a uh, human activity. But they're there, right? Uh, nests, I haven't found anything like that yet. Uh, they might sleep in the open like deer do. Uh, or if like they do in America they're, they're underground so you won't be able to see them at all during the daytime. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of features to, to look out for and uh, I'm only scratching the surface here so I'm going to do another video in a, in a little while to show some of the other evidence that I've um, been able to, to find but regarding the, the trees uh, those are the sort of things that I've been looking for and this is has given me a real headache for a very long time working out who's responsible for them and I think I can safely say now it's not deer and it's not human so it's another tick in the box for establishing credible evidence for um, British Bigfoot behaviour so watch your space and um, I'll see if I can get a, get a fresh one um, that's if I haven't done anything to frighten them away um, after the, the trees have been pushed down it's gone pretty quiet there uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you know within a month it'll be back to normal but we will see right okay I'm going to end it there and thanks for watching and uh, pass on any comments and uh, I'll do my best to uh, come back to you on that. Alright, cheers for now.